Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with David Floyer. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of VMworld 2013. This is our fourth year here at, at VMworld. We're happy to be back in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. This is the spotlight on data protection. We talked a lot, David and I talked earlier about how uh, virtualization really stresses not only storage, but generally, but data protection specifically backup. And Ed Ricks is here. He's the Vice President of Information Services, and CIO at Beaufort Memorial Hospital in South Carolina, and Ed, I got to say, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for yeah, coming thanks, on. Thanks, Dave, no problem. I got to believe that when you wake up in the morning, the last thing you want to worry about is backing up your data. You got, lot, <laughs> you got, you got lives to save, you got you know, applications to run, and, and so, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, but uh, again, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, no problem, thanks. So you've been in IT for a while, you've seen uh, virtualization transform the industry and, and your company. So why don't we start there? Um, why don't we talk a little bit about, actually before we do that, why don't we talk about the hospital, talk about Beaufort and uh, what you guys are all about. So uh, Beaufort Memorial Hospital, we're the perfect niche community hospital. We're private, not-for-profit, independent. Uh, so we don't have a, a, a business alliance with any other health system. We do have some clinical affiliations with Duke University and, and a couple other hospitals for certain service lines, but we're, uh, we're on our own. So that means that we've got to do everything ourselves and we've got to do it right. We can't afford to make mistakes on that. Beautiful place, very, very busy. Uh, Great retirement area, so we got a lot of people that moved down from the Northeast particularly to retire or at least live half the year in Beaufort. And th that does a couple of things for us. One, it brings in a whole different expectation level of our patient base, you know, for the kind of service that we provide because they're used to a certain quality of service. So for a community hospital, just from a healthcare perspective, we're pretty progressive in some of the things we've done. And that's what's driven us from an IT perspective to do some of the same things and make sure that we deliver that. Because we're not an IT organization. We are a healthcare organization and I understand that our role in that is making sure that we can provide that care. How large is the hospital? How we're a 200 bed hospital. Um, pretty full most of the time. A lot of outpatients. We have a lot mm -hmm. of uh, physician practices now that we own and employ the providers at. And it's kind of the common trend in the industry right now. So. So talk about your virtualization journey. It's always useful to just sort of, you know, set up a point in time that you guys started to go down that path. When was that and, and where are you now? We've uh, been working on server virtualization. Uh, I've been with the organization five years, I guess I should say that. So we started right then, and I've been actually a VMware user in my prior two hospitals, so we were pretty early adopters. So when you came into the hospital, there was no virtualization? There was not, no. Okay, you said, hold, hold on. Yeah. It was five years, <laughs> yeah. but not that long ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. So We've done a lot in that time. I mean, time. I guess it's an eon in this industry, but still, it's, uh, it's you know, it's enough memory. Funny is, healthcare happens to be well, one of the verticals I think that we've always been behind. Yeah. And there are always plenty of reasons in the healthcare why right. you yeah. don't, isn't right. there? There's right. a lot of uh, a, uh, a lot of FD, uh, FDA uh, very regulated uh, environment. And it needs a change yeah. agent yeah. to come yeah. in yeah. and say, yeah. "Okay, we're so going to do this." Did you have to take? A, were you aggressive in, in doing it? Did you have to take I a, would say a little risk with the odd application or two? Yes, but we had to push a lot of vendors to help us do the right thing, you know. And so I guess there was risk. I, to me, it didn't seem like risk because I knew the technology was going to work. But right. it was definitely working with vendors since the FDA regulations on a lot of the physiological devices that integrate slow down, you still have a few legacy things, but we're probably um, 95, 96% virtualized on the server side, um, and for us that's about 225 servers uh, that we run in a virtual environment, and then we're about maybe 80% virtualized on the desktop side, so most of our users now are using a virtual computer. So you say 90% of the s physical servers are virtualized, is that right? And, and how about the how about the apps? Is that so uh, same, sort of probably one -to -one? Yeah, yeah, probably probably okay. 95, 96 percent. All right. So that was five years ago. You you were the change agent. Uh, I, I I would imagine 
people, maybe there was some friction early on, but now you're a hero <laughs> inside the organization. <laughs> some days, but yeah. Well, yeah, some days, right, when the email's not down. <laughs> but, um, no, but yeah, um, so what was, the, what was the business outcome? I mean, you, you simplified things, save money, things go faster. I mean, it's a common refrain, but, but share with us your story. It is, and I've never been a big fan of calculating ROIs because that's what they are as a calculation. Really, if you're achieving what your business goals are, and, and again, I'll, I, I, we sort of stick to the same thing. My goal is to make sure we can deliver healthcare quickly, efficiently, safely, and you know, all the things that it takes to do that. And so my role is to make sure that the clinicians can do that without any interruption. But at the end of the day, we still have a lot of things that we benefited from from an IT perspective, from the virtualization. Pretty small staff at our hospital. I've got uh, seven, eight technical guys total. And that includes the help desk, you know, with all the that's, user calls. That's, uh, that's pretty small, very busy. Pretty small, we support a little small. over 2,000 users, so it's a pretty active environment, and really only three engineers out of that group. And really, okay, so well, I hear you. you know, it's the point of going back and calculating, it's just a number, right. but but the business impact is stuff gets done faster, right. you can do more, you got more money to spend on other things. Right. Um, so wh what was the, um, how did you know that? Was it just the users saying, hey, this is great, you just sort of knew it, <laughs> the so, morale went up, how, how did you sort of even, yeah. Yeah, how did you even roughly measure that? Yeah, it's kind of funny, we, uh, we, we bundled a lot of things together at one time for the clinicians, so we had a new software system that we were getting used to, and then we changed all this technology, and so we, we were calling it our invisible solution, but it was virtualizing the environment, zero client devices everywhere, uh, integrating voice recognition uh, through that system for all the physicians to do that, single sign-on solution at the same time, which is a nice win. Yeah. Uh, doctors had a doctor actually tell me after they understood what that really was going to mean, they said, oh, Nice, now you're finally doing something for us instead of to us. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good backhanded compliment. But okay, so now, so you, you, uh, you take us through when you consolidated your physical service and what did what, you go from what to what? So we went from, uh, at that time, we were probably about 175 physical servers, uh, and now we have about 15 or so physical servers that are legacy that are outside of our virtual environment. Okay, so you had all these underutilized uh, under mm -hmm. servers, right. and now you consolidate them, and now they're highly utilized, and of course the one application that, that, that was not underutilized uh, was backup before right. you consolidated. Right. And now you consolidate all these physical resources, you don't, and you got backup, which is this big, you know, resource sucking yeah. application. So did that cause a lot of stress? Does it? It did, it you know, and, and same thing. Because of the regulations that we have and because of the sensitivity of the data, and I don't think we're different than any other organization, but it is something that we take seriously, that that data is our medical record now, and so we have some legal mm -hmm. obligations to protect that and know that we have it. So if something does go wrong and the hardware breaks, you know, but we've got to make sure we can at least recover that data. It was a huge problem for us. So had a legacy tape backup system, and everybody did five or six years ago. You know, that's really all that was out there, and it was slow. We couldn't even really turn around our backups and get them done before it was time for the next backup, which was, again, a day later. So we had no shortness of that cycle, and there was no really ability to so fix it. So anything that. went wrong during that cycle. You're, you're missing the window, yeah. and so you're, or you're yeah. not yeah. backing up, right. or, you're not, or you're, applicating, you're making trade-offs that you don't want to make. Right. Okay. So, so, so what's your strategy now? Where, where are you trying to take backup? Well, what we've done in the uh, last, um, I guess, two and a half years or so is implemented mm -hmm. a totally disk-based backup system now and, and okay. everything. And we've been, a, I guess, fortunate from a community hospital perspective. We don't have a ton of resources, but we try to do the right thing. If we do the right thing, we're willing to spend the money and do it the right way. And mm -hmm. So we basically have done, uh, it's like Noah's Ark. We have two of everything. So we've uh, got our live data replicated yeah. on another SAN. So we use Recover Point for that. So that's kind of our real time or near right, real time. Right, okay. And then uh, we've got two different backup systems depending on the databases. They work better with uh, each one's data domain for our main healthcare application. Right. Uh, and it's uh, just kind of fine tuned to work really well with that. And again, two versions of that and one geographically far away from oh, us. We, right, okay. So you talked about Beaufort, beautiful place. I mean, you aren't not a lot of places you can sit in the cafeteria at lunchtime and see dolphins outside the window, literally <laughs> playing out there. But what goes along with that is we get hurricanes. So we're right on the coast, right. obviously, and there's yeah. a lot that you have to worry yeah. about with that. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. we've got to be prepared. So geographic isolation was really important. And we did the same thing with Avamar. So uh, everything but our one healthcare app goes to the Avamars, and we've got two of those also. So one on campus in one of my data centers, and then in some lease. So wait, I, I need to understand. So, so yeah. you, you brought in Avamar first, and then data domain, uh, or the other way around? Pretty right? much at the same time. You did, okay. Yeah. How did you so help us like understand, the two, this, how'd yeah. you decide where to use each technology? We, David always talks about horses for courses. Which horse <laughs> did you use for which course? Right, you know, the, uh, 
I love the Avamar technology, and I love the dedupe at the source and mm -hmm. carving out some of that traffic to go over the network. And it fits and, well in virtualized and it environment. It fits yeah. really well in that yeah. environment. Our main healthcare app is a proprietary database, and the way they do their serverless-based backup now, it really works best in the EMC environment to work with data domain and the networker software. They've got a nice little plug-in EMC has that uh -huh. make the two talk nicely that together. That was an integration. It was an integration. Value. Yep. Okay. But so, it works great. So, so you feel big chunks of data, you've got to keep them together all, mm -hmm. so that you wanted to do as fast as possible. Right. And that's with the uh, data domain, yeah, really essentially. Both yeah. are really both fast. Are fast. I mean, we've been able to but, yeah, carve yeah. those cycles down so that we can actually right. back up our important data more than one time a day, which is fantastic. So, okay. something more to happen, and uh, heaven forbid, you know, we have to go to restore, we're not losing those transactions from in the meantime. So, so your RPO is right. down to right. sub, uh, sub day? Or yeah, and that day. was really yeah. the goal. Right. So are you okay. a, a big EMC shop? I mean, why, why EMC backup? Uh, was it sort of just a natural, you know, extension of your existing environment? Did you look at other players? Talk about that a little it, bit. It was. We've had EMC equipment since before my time at the organization, mm -hmm. and it's been a good relationship, and so it was a nice natural fit. Of course, once we started to virtualize with VMware, and Cisco for our switching in the middle, and now Cisco for even our processor, and with, you know, with the UCS chassis, it's the nice fit that the three work so well together. And, and the other thing, you know, when, because I, I think you have to, as a customer, look at different opportunities and what other technologies are out there. And we've looked at a few other things, uh, either in the backup space or storage space, but what we would lose is that connected component of it from uh, just everything works well together. So, you know, to, to go to the site recovery manager and the VPlex and some of the other things that we can do, having all those technologies blend together has worked really well for us. Okay, so now where are you in terms of getting to, you know, your internal cloud, IT as a service, service catalog, where does that all stand? You know, I, I, I guess I get confused sometimes. I should have told you early on, I'm probably the dumbest guy you're going to talk to this week because I'm not an engineer, but I just understand what our business is and what we're trying to achieve. Um, but I guess we were an early cloud, private cloud kind of a person, yeah. uh, and I think that's really where we are. And I, I don't really have the qualms. I know a lot of people in healthcare are worried about public cloud and what that means from a security perspective, but smart guys, you got you, people figure that out. You know, the technology is really there. It's just understanding and using it the right way. Okay, so, so you guys are, are, from a backup standpoint, are, are you able to sort of provide different levels of service for different applications? I mean, you sort of did it with the Avamar mm -hmm. and the data domain for the different major apps, but do you have a business requirement to get more granular, um, to be able to, to, to dial Forget up Forget about dial that down. application and put more yeah. resources. Yeah, I mean, it's part some, of our disaster yeah. recovery plan, at least as it prioritizes things, yeah. and yeah. Uh, we want to back everything up. Anything that's got any clinical information, we have to have it so we can restore. You know, we got some regulations around that. From a business perspective, we want everything protected. And, and I think where we've made some of the, I guess, cost benefit decisions maybe is more around recovery point and having that real time backup. We don't right. have everything going to our uh, replicated CM, but it's, you know, it's definitely our priority applications and data. Yeah, okay, so it sounds like you've integrated the backup, the DR, you've taken a holistic right. approach to that. Uh, which you know a, a lot of companies haven't. But uh, so, what's next on the roadmap? Or what's? Let me ask you differently. What's on EMC's to-do list from your standpoint? You know, one of the things that intrigued me is. Uh, and I think I mentioned one of the ways I get measured every year just from an evaluation perspective is, uh, and it surprises people, it's by the adoption rate of our physicians to use our software applications because we're trying to deliver software applications that can help them provide better care, make better clinical decisions at the point of care. Uh, and so to me, anything I can do to enhance that experience, and one of the things that I think I've always wanted to work on some more is how do we just drive down the uh, login time to their virtual desktops, you know, because it's, it's an annoyance, and even if it's, seven seconds if we can make it four seconds and and be able to justify the I expense mean, to do that. So I love the flash arrays. I mean I like flash the, arrays. Yeah, yeah, that's something I think really makes a ton of up. sense. So because you've got yeah, a, when you look at the uh, when you look at the business value of those mm -hmm. high high cost professional right. people having sure. to log in right. ten times a day, yeah. twenty times a day, seconds count, don't yeah. they? Well yeah, and yeah, you've got a I mean, you got a kind of a, a imperative to do this with electronic medical records it, and meaningful right. use, yeah. Yeah. right? So you actually yeah. measured on that. So, That's correct. So if I understand it correctly, the, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a carrot strategy, at least in part. And right? there's a stick Let's also. Let's make the experience yeah. better, and I'm yeah. sure there's a stick there too, yeah. but, but without that carrot, right. you know, doctors aren't going to Yeah, the so technology so shouldn't be yeah. a barrier to what they're doing, and I think that's the approach we've tried to take. 
Excellent. So you heard about the V Flash today, and is that uh, uh, yeah helpful for you? I, I think that makes a lot of sense, also. And again, yeah. sometimes I don't understand the, uh, the degree of the technical, yeah. but I, yeah. I mean, I get the application, and I understand yeah. why it makes sense to us. But I think anything that can speed that speed up, up, that, that right. that's a smart yeah. thing to do. So, yeah. Ed, uh, so last question is. Um, Customers out there that maybe not, haven't made the transformation, you know, they're struggling with backup windows, you know, they're not maybe, maybe they're not meeting their backup window, the things are going unprotected, or they're not getting their systems online in time. What advice would you give them with regard to, you know, taking on such an initiative? You know, I would definitely say, probably that data is the most valuable asset that we have as an organization, and so, uh, other than, I guess, our people that help deliver the care, but that data is extremely important, and you need to spend as much time thinking about that, planning for it, being prepared with it, as you do anything else in the environment. And I know it's the probably the least sexy thing to talk about, and there's so many other things that are going on that are very interactive with your users, but to me, protecting that data is one of the things that helps me sleep in that a little bit. Awesome. All right, everyone, listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, David, for co-hosting with me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is the Virtualization Spotlight. We're here live at VMworld. We're unpacking data protection, data protection as a service. Keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. Awesome.